With giant leaps forward and things like CGI and AI, we tend to look at things that are amazing on the internet with a little bit of skepticism. You see an incredible sunset of reds, oranges, and pinks, and you wonder how much photoshopping was done here, which oddly enough is what I always think whenever I see a picture of the Kardashians. In today's video, I'm gonna show you some unbelievable places in the United States that actually exist. We won't be looking at the ones everybody knows like the Grand Canyon, Old Faithful, or the Smoky Mountains. These are 10 that most people don't know about. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, White Sands National Park. White Sands National Park down in southern New Mexico is like something out of a dream. This is a massive stretch of dazzling white gypsum sand dunes that covers about 275 square miles, making it the biggest gypsum dune field on the planet. These dunes are seriously out of this world and they've taken thousands of years to form. Basically, the wind did its thing, carrying away gypsum crystals from the nearby mountains and sculpting this ever-changing landscape. But what's amazing about this place is not just these white dunes, it's the animals and the plants that have adapted to this area. Nothing should live here. If you go here, there's all kinds of fun stuff to do. One of my favorite things to do is actually you take a sandboard, which is similar to a snowboard, and you go down the dunes. It's a lot of fun. But if you want to take a hike through the sand dunes and you got a decent camera, this is a great spot to spend a weekend or at least a day. Number nine, the Mendenhall Ice Caves. The Mendenhall Ice Caves up at the Mendenhall Glacier near Juneau, Alaska are like something out of a fairy tale. Been in here a couple times, it is insane. Take a lot of Alaskan cruises. Eventually, if you do that, you end up in these ice caves. So this is Glacier Bay. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cold. I don't know if you've ever been near a glacier, but they're made of ice and uh, it's cold up here. I really underdressed for this one. These insane ice caves are carved out by Mother Nature herself as the glacier does its slow dance of moving and melting. It's like she wants to make secret hideaways for all of us to go hang out in and, you know, see wonderful enchanting blue colors and hope the ice doesn't give away and crush you to death in there. But when you go in here, I don't think cameras can do it justice. I know video cameras don't. You take a video camera in there and it's really not worth it. That's my opinion. But it's just, it's little low light it just kind of glows blue. It is so cool. If you do take a cruise to Alaska, make sure this is one of your excursions you do. They have all kinds of companies that do it. Definitely check this one out. Number eight, the Ho Rainforest. The Ho Rainforest in Washington's Olympic National Park is a mesmerizing natural wonder that totally captivates anyone who sets foot here. Been here about four times. It is amazing. This rainforest is kind of unique. It's not the steamy tropical rainforest you'd expect or you've seen in movies. Instead, this thrives in the cooler, wetter climate, getting a mind-blowing 140 to 170 inches of rain a year. The forest is like something out of a Lord of the Rings book with towering trees covered in moss that create this magical cathedral-like atmosphere. The ground is like a lush carpet of ferns, mosses, and old logs, and it's bursting with all kinds of paths and critters. Don't be surprised if you see things run across the path in front of you. Nothing there's really dangerous. Never heard of anyone getting attacked by anything other than other humans. Even though you're out in the wilderness, it's fairly safe. This one is a great place to take a nice walk or go for a serious hike. You can do it all here. It's a big area. This is another one that low light videography doesn't work that well, except on, cause it's always cloudy. So you got overcast and then it's kind of dark in the bush there. So if you're using a GoPro or something like that, it's gonna get all pixelated. Unless you're on a rare day where it's nice and sunny and you got a lot of light coming in, then great. But if you can get a good camera to come up here or a lot of cell phones now work better than the GoPros, do that. Number seven, Portland's Japanese Garden. The Portland Japanese Garden, right in the heart of Oregon's bustling city, that's what it says on the website, they're really on the edge of it, above all the nonsense. But it is like a tranquil oasis that just calls you to come and experience this serene beauty. The garden is a perfect blend of Japanese landscaping ideas and elements of the Pacific Northwest, creating a one-of-a-kind and totally captivating experience. As you stroll along the winding paths, you'll find yourself surrounded by lush greenery and koi ponds, and of course, towering maple trees. They're everywhere. There's also those really cool Japanese stone lanterns. You won't find better landscaping just about anywhere. I mean, you go to Disneyland or something like that, and they just have amazing landscape. You know, they have whole crews of 100 people do landscape at Disneyland. This is better. Honestly, where art meets nature.
Number six, the Molokini Crater off the coast of Maui in Hawaii. This place is seriously cool. It's this volcano-shaped thing that took forever to form, and now it's like this half-submerged island. The way its shape makes it an awesome place to spot all kinds of sea creatures, so it's a big hit with all the folks that like to snorkel and dive. The water here is so clear that you can see everything. Just floating on the top with your snorkel and your mask, you could see plenty. But if you want to dive and go lower, even better. The Molokini Crater is basically an underwater paradise with tons of cool stuff to see. And it's a must visit if you're into nature and you're in Maui. Now here's the thing about going out there. There's a couple different boats and tours you could take. Actually, there's dozens of them. Some of the boats are a lot slower. If you take one of those little fast rafts, you could be out there in like 20 minutes. If you take one of the other ones, it's like a 50 minute ride out there. A little more luxurious that way. But it's usually like a two hour tour. So if you're taking 45 minutes out and 45 minutes back, you don't have that much time. They do have longer ones, but I think two hours is good enough. If you do go there and you're taking a tour, make sure you ask them to go to the elevator, which is on the back side of it. And where the water goes up against the rocks, it doesn't go into the rocks, it rises. So you're on this elevator thing. It's really, really fun. Number five, Castello di Amorosa. I hope I pronounce that right. I've been there before many years, but it's a uh, it's a really cool castle in the middle of the Napa Valley and all the wine country. This is a jaw dropping castle that whisks you away to a different era. The place is the brainchild of a wine enthusiast that had a deep love for medieval architecture. The castle itself is not this fake thing, you know, it's, it's not just plaster made to look like it's real stone. They really built this thing. You look at the doors on the place and it's like thick wood. One person told me it was brought out there from Italy and they only used handmade nails to put things together here. I don't know if that's for the whole place, but it's definitely for the doors. My suggestion is go here in the summer or spring when it's winter and it's all gray, it's kind of nasty, but the Napa Valley is beautiful. And then they got this castle there. It's amazing. Number four, Antelope Canyon, Arizona. Antelope Canyon is nestled within the Navajo Nation in Northern Arizona. This is an extraordinary geological masterpiece shaped over centuries by relentless forces of water and wind. This is made up of two distinct sections, the Upper Antelope Canyon and the Lower Antelope Canyon. Each offers a unique jaw-dropping experience. The Upper Antelope Canyon is renowned for its sunlit beams penetrating through the narrow passages. I'm sure you've seen a picture or two, probably didn't know what it was but this it looks like a wonderland like i don't know it's just amazing the summer months again is the best way to go here especially if you're into photography you know that's where you're going to get the best shots of the sunlight coming through the little narrow gaps the smooth walls of the canyon come alive with vibrant colors ranging from rich reds to soft purples creating a surreal and captivating ambiance for visitors on the other hand the lower antelope canyon while less frequented is equally as enchanting with a labyrinth of paths leading to chain adorned with remarkable natural hues. Though the light beams here are less common, it's really not as big a thing there, it's still breathtaking. Both sections of Antelope Canyon offer photography enthusiasts a dream day, dream weekend, whatever you want to do. Now, it's also important to know that these canyons hold cultural significance to the Navajo people and visitors are encouraged to show the utmost respect for both the environment and the cultural heritage of these areas. The Palouse. The Palouse is this grassland, farmland area in the Pacific Northwest, mainly spreading its charm across parts of Washington and Idaho. It is famous for its rolling hills that seem to go on forever, covered in lush green wheat, barley, and lentil fields. It's like something out of a dream. And no wonder this is a hot spot for photographers and nature buffs. What makes the Palouse even cooler is that the wild geological history of the place, it's shaped by ancient floods and a little volcanic action. They used to think it was all because of the Cascade Mountains and the volcanoes there, but then after years of research, they realized that the Canadian glaciers actually pushed all this silt down to this area. This is some of the most fertile land on the planet. In a hundred years, they haven't had a failed crop. Number two, the Oneonta Gorge. The Oneonta Gorge, which I've heard called several different things, but we're going with Oneonta, is a hidden gem in the stunning Columbia River Gorge of Oregon. It's not too far from Portland. It is this super cool, lush, and kind of narrow canyon that'll blow your mind if you're into nature stuff. 
To get to the heart of the gorge, you've got to wade through the chilly waters of the Oneonta Creek. If you have mobility issues, I would scratch this one off your to-do list. It can get a little rough, especially if you're not there in the dead of summer. The water gets a little high, it's cold, and it's rocky creek you're walking through. But the payoff is worth it if you can make it. They have some of the greatest waterfalls on the planet in this area of the Columbia River Gorge, but when you get to the end of this one, it is amazing. There's epic waterfalls that are just tumbling down from above, making this part of the gorge even more mystical and awesome. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link for that down below. All right, on to number one. And number one, the Ashi Slay Pa Wilderness. The Ashi Slay Pa Wilderness out in northwestern New Mexico is seriously something else. I mean, besides the name and how hard it is to pronounce, and I probably butchered it, this place is beautiful. It's like stepping into a science fiction movie. Now, besides Ashley Slaypa, they have the Bisti and the Denazian, which I'm sure I butchered those names, but they're all this like badland area in the Valley of Dreams in New Mexico. You could hike to each one if you want. But Ashley Slaypa has a trailhead right there, and it's the easiest one to get to from the road. The whole area is amazing. Picture this. Wild badlands that'll blow your mind and all these crazy rocks in every color that geology has to offer. These weird geological sculptures have been here for a very long time, being eaten away from sheer rock by wind and sand. Now, Ashi Slaypa comes from Navajo and it means gray salt, which totally fits because these are shale formations. And they do have this eerie gray-blue shade. If you're up for it, you could go on some epic hikes and explore this ancient terrain that's been around for millions of years. It's like a sneak peek into the Earth's history books, courtesy of Mother Nature herself. If you like to be outdoors and you're an adventure junkie, this is a great hike and something really cool to see. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.